Welcome to another hotel tour here on the very unofficial travel guides. This one's gonna be different because something has happened that never happens to me. I think I, think I, found, I found a, a favorite. favorite. <laughs> I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I've been making travel videos for over 15 years of popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it's like to be there. And this is our first visit to Hawaii. We're actually here just for a short stay of three nights before boarding the Royal Caribbean Brilliance of the Seas, which is going to be cruising to some of the other islands and then over to Vancouver, Canada. Those videos will be coming up here on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed and please give me a thumbs up before you go. And you will know if you follow me here on YouTube that I've stayed in a lot of hotels and I'm usually kind of picky about what it is that I want. I don't usually stay in very expensive hotels. I look for the coolest, funnest, most interesting hotel for a low-ish budget. So let me show you around and tell you a little bit more about it. Disclaimer, this room is lived in. That's how we do it here on the very unofficial travel guides. If you want to see pictures of the room like it looks in the hotel brochure, then go to the hotel website. This is what the room looks like when there are people staying in it. And let me know what you think as we go along. This is room 248. It is a pool view room and this is the curb appeal the first impression you get when you enter the room. You can see it has a very retro Hawaii vibe. This is obviously an older property that's been updated recently and I cannot complain. It's a very spacious room actually. We opted for two beds. If you choose a king bed, there's a small seating area that's included in the room. I'll take a look at the balcony a little bit later. One thing that I really like is not necessarily this kind of old school telephone, but they have put an adapter here for two power plugs and two USB ports between the beds. So you can share this with both sides. And I just feel like charging ports next to the bed are something that any modern hotel or cruise ship cabin needs to have nowadays. There isn't a ton of storage space to put your things away to like unpack. You basically have these three drawers and the hanging area of the closet over there. So if you're gonna be staying here a little bit longer and wanna unpack your stuff, you're gonna to have to be creative, maybe use these cubbies down here or just leave it in your suitcase. There's this interesting sort of kitchenette area over here that includes a microwave, water cooker, and like college size refrigerator. I always call this college size, but it's just a mini refrigerator. There are cups provided over on this little cart, but there is no coffee or tea provided. So if that's something you're gonna want, you're gonna need to bring that on your own. This little cake we took from the plane, also not provided by the hotel. And the bathroom door is Morgan approved. It's a real door that closes all the way that you can't see through. Let's look at the bathroom. There is only one wash basin, but pretty good counter space for two people. See the crappers over there in the corner, this old school style window up there. I know some people prefer a shower curtain, some people prefer no shower curtain, and if you're staying at the White Sands, you will get a shower curtain. And now let's go check out the balcony. But before I do that, let me just invite you to subscribe to the very unofficial travel guides here on YouTube and check out my book, Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship, available on Amazon now. The Balcony. One of the huge selling points for us when picking the White Sands was this palm-filled oasis between the buildings. A view of the beach was not important to us because we were about to be on a cruise ship for nine days and this balcony was fantastic. If you look at the property from above, you can see that the hotel is three buildings and then the central pool area has the pool, a tiki hut bar, hot tub and waterfall and several seating areas. Yeah, it's not the beach, but on the end of the street in one direction is this waterway and behind that is a golf course and then the mountains. And on the other end of the street, just like three blocks in the other direction is the Pacific Ocean. Okay, I know this is gonna sound cheesy, but the pool area felt like our little slice of paradise. A lot of the time we spent at the hotel was down under the palm trees or on our balcony drinking our morning coffee or playing cards and drinking a bottle of wine 
wine in the evenings before bed. Because the hotel is not one of these huge skyscrapers with like 800 guests, it felt more exclusive and really kind of private. We booked a special deal directly over the hotel's website, which gave us a $20 a day food and beverage credit that we used for drinks and lunch by the pool one afternoon, and the food was great. It was handmade and with big portions, and looking at this right now is making me really hungry. This is another cool thing about the vibe and design of the hotel. The lobby is basically outside. You can walk straight from the street to the lobby and through the lobby to the pool with no doors. A word about the rooms and location. It is kind of loud here. They have pool parties on the weekends, there's music playing, and you will hear noise from the streets. I would highly recommend booking a pool view room, or if you want to be on ground level and walk directly out of your room into the oasis, a pool side room. You can save a little bit of money if you book a city view room, but you're going to end up with a view of either the next door neighbors on this side of the building or the parking lot on the other side of the building. It's up to you. Another thing to note is the hotel does have some outside hallways and no elevators. They do offer luxury luggage service to your room if you don't want to carry it up or down yourself, but at least in two of the three buildings, you will be climbing up and down stairs to get to and from your room unless you have a poolside room. And almost always, no matter where I go and no matter how many times I have been to some place, even if I stay in a hotel that I like, if I go back there, I usually want to stay in a different hotel just because I like trying out different things and I also like to bring new information to you viewers out there too. And I have to tell you people, like I said, I don't usually pick favorites. I don't usually land in the situation that I am in right now, but I know that when and if I come to Waikiki again, I'm definitely staying in this hotel. I never thought I would end up on Hawaii. It wasn't something that I really had at the top of my list because it's just so far away from where we live in Germany. And I'm so glad it worked out. This cannot be our last visit to Honolulu. I already know I would love to come here again. Marcus and I were saying this day feels more like like an orientation for our next, not yet planned, longer visit. If you've been to Waikiki several times and you have a favorite hotel, let me know which one it is. Maybe I will check it out next time, but at the moment, I just think this is the hotel I wanna stay in again. If you like to read and enjoy travel stories about things going right and horribly wrong out on the road, please check out my book. It's called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship, available on Amazon now. I really did have to get stitches on a cruise ship. Also, make sure you're subscribed. Like I said, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and I hope to see you back here soon on the very unofficial travel guides. Bye-bye.